Hey guys, Taco G here, back with another video on Diamond Fire. Um, and I know we've gone over variables before, but today we're going to be going over them uh, in detail because I never actually went over them. Wait a second, I just said I did. I'm a liar. Well, we've used variables before, but we've, I've never actually explained them. And this is what this video is all about. So if we just come right around here. I just uh, chest sorted out and everything with all these variables. So this is the basic variable item. Uh, and if you read over lore, you can see all this other stuff about it. Blah blah blah. No one cares. So a variable can be set to a number, text, or a location value. So that means this will be a number. It's a slime ball. You just type in an integer, which is a whole number, uh, positive or negative. That. Yeah, and you can set a variable to that. Now, there are differences with different types of variables. So, they're all the same. They're all going to be the same item, of course, but some of them are set values like this. Will never be able to. This will never change. It will always be one unless I change it manually or do something in the code space itself. But this can be. These can be changed at any moment in the game. Uh, let's see. So let's go over the selectors. So you can have variables named whatever you want. Name, thing, node, diamonds, farts, heal, f. It doesn't matter what you want. But you can name those any type of thing you want. But these are all going to be variables that are saved to the game itself. And what I mean by that is it's not for a particular player. So name would just be whatever name is like it wouldn't be associated with anyone in particular's name. Uh, it would just be associated with name. Uh, so like, but if you assign something like percent player on it, which targets the last player that was targeted by their code space, uh, you can have percent player name. And what this will do is it will replace percent player with the name of the last person who was associated with their code. So let's say you have uh, you damage the player when you damage a player. Uh, heal the victim 20 so you can, I don't know, instant respawn, you know. Uh, then, uh, you set, then you set percent player name to, I don't know, their name, I guess. And what it would do is it would set the victim, uh, where percent player is because they it, you healed them and then set the variable and since they were the last person we talked about in the code it's going to target that player if you don't want that you can use something percent default percent default targets the whoever started the code so on join percent default will be the person who joined uh, percent player will be replaced by whoever like is last targeted so if you uh, on join you sent a message saying percent player just joined the game Whoever is playing would see their own name in that message. Percent default would see, uh, then everyone would see the name of the person who just joined. So you gotta remember that. Uh, so if you set it up with something like thing, you get percent default thing. So now with the same thing about you know healing the victim, you can have percent default uh, thing be set to something like one, and then it would set whoever damaged that player because they're the one who started the event, not the, uh, the victim who just got healed. Uh, who would have been targeted if we use percent player? Uh, percent killer. Uh, it's a very similar thing. It just targets whoever killed somebody in that event. So percent. If you kill, if let's say you're in player kill player event, which is probably what you're in, percent killer would target whoever killed the person, which would also be percent default. But let's say you use percent player at one point in your variables. Then the whoever was last targeted will be target uh will be replaced by percent player. But let's say they're the victim and you want to switch back to the killer. You could use default or you could use killer. It doesn't really matter. Or maybe you want to use the victim as well because that's also a thing you can use. Let's say you want to uh, add victim and killer's diamonds together to equal up to the killer di new diamond amount or something. I don't know. But again, you just put that in front of something like node, and you have percent killer node, and then you have whoever killed somebody, their node variable, their variable will be set to whatever you want. 
instead of just have a note. Percent damager diamonds, percent damager diamonds, same similar thing, it's just whoever did dealt damage. Victim, whoever got hit or died. Entity, this one's special because it targets entities instead of players, which means you can have like entity kill F, wherever that even means. I don't know, I saw it one time in the MDT data. And uh, you know, it'll target the whatever entity was last targeted, or have many, I, I don't know. I haven't used it ever, but I kind of know how to use it. So let's say you have uh, something like, um, excuse me, uh, click entity, and you want it to have, I don't know, set the entity's variable or something. I don't know why anyone would use it, honestly. Like, it could be useful, I get it, but I never used it myself, so uh, we're just gonna pretend like it's useful. Uh, so that's how to put things on variables, but the boundaries of which are set by these variables, what I mean saying random words, uh, the consequences of our phone, cellular, internet webs, um, like the differences between these are just that it adds names and stuff to these variables to differentiate them because if you kept setting uh, kills plus one every time someone kills somebody it wouldn't track every individual of the player's kills it would track the total amount of kills that everyone has gotten collectively it wouldn't just like keep track of each individual player's kills if you did killer kills or even percent default kills but maybe it doesn't matter which one you use percent player damager killer default whatever you want to use you can set their kills to whatever and keep track of them in particular without uh, affecting the entire game's variables so that's how you use it now one more thing if you see at the bottom of this it says sneak and right click while holding to add the save tag so if we do this We've added a save tag, and we can actually get rid of all the lore on it by undoing it, but we're going to keep it anyway. So, what save does, it just means that when you come back to the game, it will still be there. If you don't have the save tag, the variable will be set back to zero, and it will just, actually it will just be gone, but when a variable hasn't been set to anything, it will default to zero. So, yeah, it just deletes whatever variables do not have the save tag. And now, onto more things such as how do you actually set the variables so normally you'd have a set variable block but I've gotten rid of all my code blocks uh, for this so percent damage or diamonds one this would set damage uh, percent damage or whoever hit somebody's diamonds to one percent default thing so as you can see I have it twice in a row and then I have two this would add two to it how this works is actually you know what how about I just do this? So let's set this on right click and then we'll just have set variable. So you put this down and you grab your variable item. So we'll just call this percent player uh, number. We won't have the save tag. We're going to plop this right in. Now we're just going to put one in here. I'm going to put that in. So now, if I want to actually see the variable, I could do pop variables when I get in, but I'm going to do some extra stuff. Uh, and I'm going to put down a scoreboard. Uh, let's see. Show sidebar. Uh, set score, scoreboard score. We're just going to say, we're just going to call it uh, me. We're just going to call it percent player number. So now if I come in here and I right click. As you can see, me is set to 1 now, and if I keep right clicking, it stays at 1. This is because whatever is in this first slot will be what's set. This is the variable that will be set to the following, and 1 is what it will be set to. Now, if we want to say add 1 to it, then we put percent player number right here. This sets it to itself, so it stays the same value, but now what comes after this is added onto this to make this. 
So you don't have to put the same variable right here. You could use a completely different variable. So you can set this to an addition of two more variables or three more variables, but you know, you can extend this however long you want. Or if you want to multiply it by two, you just put the same variable in there three times because it sets it to itself and then adds itself. But we're just going to add one and now back into mode. Go back into mode play. So I'm not warned again. This is, oh my god, two videos in a row and people have been warned. So now if I right click again, as you can see, it starts going up. And we're not done just yet. There's still more to variables. In fact, variables aren't the only thing you can get here. There's text, numbers, locations, sound effects, particle effects, potion effects, variable value, and special spawn eggs. These are not variables. These are, you know, you just, if you want to spawn something in like a where this goes through something, you can do that. But there are tons of other values. So text, you just type something in, blah, blah, blah. And it takes that, you can color it, you can add bold text in it, you can give it that weird, oh my god, what's, what's happening? You can do anything, there's actually a reference book right here, so if you forget any of the colors or any of these, you can put those back in. And it also explains what some of these things do, not entity, that hasn't been added, but, you know, I told you about that. So. If you ever forget, you have a reference book uh, in your inventory, or you could call for support. And going back over some of these variables, again, number, you can set that to any integer, which is a positive or negative number. That is whole, so no decimals. Uh, location, you just go in here, and you right-click, and it sets it to wherever you're standing, and it now supports where you're looking as well. So if I'm looking straight up, then it'll set the value to looking straight up. If I'm looking straight down, well, I'm actually clicking on a block. So, okay, yeah, that's the difference. If you click on a block, it'll set the location to the block you just clicked. But if you're not, it'll set it to where you're looking and standing. But, of course, it's not all you can do. You can also shift right click it, and you can get the location of the default player, whoever is starting an event, the damager, the killer, victim, entity, you already know all those. But what's special about these is if we get one of these and we right click it, we can set um their pitch their yaw wait no 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 their pitch yaw and their uh you know actual location so let's say you want to teleport you forward and you right click or maybe you just launch you forward and you right click or oh, no 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 teleport because yeah let's say you want to teleport them 10 blocks forward when they right click we could do that we take their oh whoops i forgot so you actually have to click confirm down here okay so now when i right click it will teleport me 10 blocks ahead so if i come in here and there you go so that's how that works but there's still more there's sound effects Particle effects and potion effects. Potion effect, you select one of these, uh, type in the amplifier and the amount of time, and just throw it in something, give or remove potion effect. Particle effect, you just come in here, you can see damage hearts, you, can, you have all these other stuff, huge explosion, large smoke, heart, lava, enchantment runes, slime, it doesn't matter. Then there's sound effects, same thing, you come in here, we have a lot of sound effects. So you just come in here, you look around, uh, I want the sound of opening uh, an iron door. Or I want the sound of a spider scream. Or I want splash. Maybe I just want thunder. It also gives you a demo of the sound when you click it. So you know what it sounds like before you put it in your game. Gosh. Okay, and then there's also values. Last thing. These values are in a way variables, but cannot be changed uh, in by most conventional methods. You can change them definitely, but there are values that the player has or the game has that can only be changed like in the game itself. You can't change them via the code normally. So, like if you say value current health. This, this gets the current health of the default player 
uh, or no, the last player, I believe. And then if you come in here, you can set it, if you shift right click, you can set it to victim, damager, killer, or default player. So, then there's also maximum health. So, current health is how many hearts, like, how much health they have right now. Max being the total amount that they can have. Current food level will be a level from, uh, 0 to 20, I believe. Yes, because 20 if it's full, 0 if there's literally nothing in there. Current XP level, uh, is whatever level they are. Current XP percentage is how full the bar is. Current armor points is how many armor points they have. Fire ticks, air remaining, eye location, block location. This is just like, uh, this is the block they're looking at. This is, um, oh man, my eye. Okay. This is their X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate, their t the total amount of players in the game, uh, how much damage was dealt in the event. So let's say uh, on damage player, you could have this in here. And let's say you wanted a combat log, then you could say uh, you hit percent victim for this much damage, or uh, percent damager hit you for this much damage. So that's pretty useful. And you can also pair that with current health. And maximum health to say when you kill somebody, uh, when you die, your opponent had this uh, this much health, which I've, I've actually done in one of my games before. So values to change them, you have to for like current health or maximum health, you'd have to use player actions such as damage, heal, or set max health. You could also set food level to change the food level. Uh, um, let's see what else can you do. Uh, event damage and total player count can only, can only be changed via, you know, how much damage they do or how many players are in the game. So you cannot change that. Armor points, they can change by equipping new armor. So this just gets values that the player has that normally cannot be changed. So that's what it is. And of course, you, these will norm just about always be a number. Uh, and in fact, they should all be numbers. So if you want to set a variable, say, if you want to add uh, your current current health to a percent player number, and again, display that right there, what I can do is I can damage myself for one. So now, it starts off at 20 for some reason. Wait a second, is it just set to, is it set to save? Uh, am I lagging? This should be working. Maybe it's because I'm in the game. And there are none. Oh, it's, it's still it's just still set from last time. So, now I right clicked. It's added my current health to number, which was 20 at the, at the time. Uh, from 0 to 20. And it's damage me 1 health. I do it again. Damage me again. So it's gonna add my current health every time, but deal one damage, which means I have to wait for my health to regen if I wanted it to keep going up by the same amount. The less health I have, the less it goes up. Bam. And on that last one, it only dealt get one up one because I only had half a heart. So that's really how you use values and variables. Uh, if you have any further questions, please tell me or contact staff on the server. And I hope you guys make some great games. See you guys later.